Star Wars Episode 7 The Force Awakens was directed by J.J. Abrams and written by Lawrence Kasdan, J.J. Abrams, and Michael Arndt. The film centers around the Star Wars universe set 30 years after Return of the Jedi. I'm Joe from Real Talk, and I will be breaking down the film and giving my in-depth review of this amazing film. Spoilers are ahead, so click on your screen for my spoiler-free review. You can also click on your screen on the right to skip my plot overview and go straight to my review. Without further ado, The Force Awakens. The film begins with a traditional crawl we all know and love. The crawl tells us that Luke Skywalker, played by Mark Hamill, the last Jedi, has disappeared. The First Order, remnants of the Galactic Empire, made it their mission to find and hunt down the Jedi Master. However, the Resistance, a military coalition of the New Republic, are also looking to find Luke Skywalker for help in their most trivial moment with the First Order. The First Order sends down a group of stormtroopers to find Resistance pilot Poe Dameron, played by Oscar Isaac, to retrieve a missing piece of the map to find Luke Skywalker. Skywalker. Poe receives the map from an old friend played by Max von Sydow when his droid BB-8 alerts him of the New Order's presence. Poe hands BB-8 the map and tells him to flee. Kylo Ren, played by Adam Driver, a mysterious and powerful force user, leads the attack, capturing Poe Dameron and ruthlessly killing his friend. Ren leaves Captain Phasma, played by Gwendolyn Christie, to deal with the civilians. She signals her units to kill all the remaining civilians. However, one stormtrooper named FN-2187, aka Finn, played by John Boyega, hesitates from killing the civilians. The First Order make their exit after the giant massacre. The next morning we meet Rey, played by Daisy Ridley, a scavenger left behind at a young age. She meets and befriends BB-8, both drawing similarities to waiting for their friend and or family. Back in the First Order Star Destroyer, Kylo Ren interrogates Poe by giving him information on the map. Kylo discovers that BB-8 has the map and alerts General Hux, played by Don Will Gleason. General Hux orders his troops to head back down to Jakku to find a droid. Finn, already conflicted, decides to flee the First Order and rescue Poe. The two escape with the TIE Fighter and nearly evade the enemy. However, they crash land on Jakku. There, Finn discovers Poe's jacket, but no trace of the man. Finn makes his way to a Jakku's junkyard settlement and bumps into Rey along with BB-8. Finn tells Rey that BB-8's master and old friend Poe was gone and tells him that Finn is with the Resistance. The trio are attacked by the First Order TIE Fighters, and after the first choice was destroyed, Rey and Finn decide to take an old ship which we all know is the Millennium Falcon. The two escape the enemy ships and are seemingly safe. Rey and Finn decide to help return BB-8 to the Resistance, however, a larger ship captures the Falcon and the trio hides. As Han Solo, played by Harrison Ford, and Chewbacca, played by Peter Mayhew, entered the Falcon. Solo discovers the trio and tells them that the stories of the Jedi and Luke Skywalker are real. Before leaving, the group are boarded and met by two criminal factions. The two factions demand Solo give up BB-8 since the First Order has a bounty on them. A hiding ray accidentally releases three Ranthars. The creatures attack the factions and give Solo, Chewie, Ray, Finn, and BB-8 the opening they need to escape. The group arrives at the planet of Takedona, home of Maz Cantana, played by Lupita Nyong'o. At her castle, Cantana tells Han to take the droid to General Leia Organa, played by Carrie Fisher. A First Order spy contacts the First Order, while another spy contacts the Resistance. Finn, still seeking to escape and run from the First Order, decides to immediately leave with the group to the Outer Rim. Rey stops him and attempts to talk him out of it. Finn rejects Rey and leaves with the smugglers. Rey then is called by the Force and discovers a room. She opens a chest inside the room containing the lightsaber of both Luke and Anakin Skywalker. Upon touching it, Rey gets visions of the past. The visions reveal Jedi Master Luke Skywalker and R2-D2 along with herself as a child watching her parents depart from Shaku. Her next vision was of Kylo Ren and the Knights of Ren surrounded by slaughtered people. After the vision, Maz finds Rey asking her to take the next step to become a Jedi and to take the lightsaber. Rey refuses in anger and leaves. Meanwhile, at the Starkiller base, a large weaponized planet, the First Order regroups. Kylo Ren and General Hux are confronted by Supreme Leader Snoke, played by Andy Serkis. Lord Snoke warns Kylo Ren of the light side of his head, which is his father, Han Solo. Snoke tells Kylo Ren that the only way to eliminate the light from his mind is to kill his father. Ren later sits in front of a burnt Darth Vader helmet. He talks to the helmet as if his grandfather was in attendance. He asks his grandfather, Darth Vader, for guidance. Meanwhile, the First Order fires their massive superweapon and destroys the Hajdian system, including the new capital of the New Republic. Back on Tekadona, the First Order attacks the group to capture the map and fugitives. 
Suddenly, Resistance X-Wing fighters arrive and battle with the First Order. Finn discovers that Rey ran off and takes a lightsaber to go find her. In the forest, Rey is chased and captured by Kylo Ren. Finn and company witness the First Order taking Rey, no longer needing BB-8. General Leia arrives at the ruins and reunites with Han Solo. The group head to the Resistance base on Dakar. There, Finn discovers Poe is not only alive, but also led the air attack on K Takadona. Finn asks the Resistance to help rescue Rey from the Starkiller base. General Leia and her advisors agree to re the rescue plan while also planning to cripple and possibly destroy the Starkiller base. Finn, being a former stormtrooper, aids the Resistance into planning the attack. At the Starkiller base, Rey is met and interrogated by Kylo Ren. Kylo tries to retrieve the map information from Rey's head with the Force. However, the Force-sensitive Rey resists and turns the mind battle against Kylo Ren. Ren flees to speak with his master while Rey uses a Force mind trick on a stormtrooper to free herself. Han Solo, Finn, and Chewbacca arrive to the base. There, they make their way inside to disable the shields for an attack led by Poe Dameron. Finn and the group capture Captain Phasma and demand she disable the shields. They run into Rey and begin to plant the bombs. The group are confronted by Kylo Ren as the air battle commences. Han calls out to his son Ben and pleads for him to return to the light side. Kylo Ren claims that Ben is dead and refuses Han's help. As Han draws closer, he agrees to help Kylo's pain in his head. Kylo then kills Han Solo and thanks him for helping him. Han plummets down to the bridge to his death. Enraged, Chewbacca fires at Kylo Ren and blows up the planted bombs. Kylo Ren escapes and follows Rey and Finn into the forest. There, he challenges the two to a fight. Kylo knocks out an angered Rey and gets in a lightsaber duel with Finn. Outmatched, Finn loses the fight and is severely wounded by Kylo Ren. Finn drops his lightsaber and Kylo Ren attempts to grab the lightsaber using the Force. He is shocked when he discovers that the lightsaber passes him by to the hands of Rey. While the fight goes on, the Resistance discover the weakened hole of the base and attack. Poe Dameron and company destroy the weak point. This causes a chain reaction tilt that starts leveling the entire planet terrain from the inside. General Hux contacts Lord Snoke. Snoke commands Hux to bring Kylo Ren with him to his planet. Snoke tells Hux that it's time to finish Kylo Ren's training. Kylo Ren and Rey reach to a halting stop as they are met by a cliff edge. Rey uses the force to gain dominance over the duel. She cripples Kylo Ren and is separated by a trench formed by the planet's fracture. Rey finds a severely hurt Finn and is retrieved by Chewbacca. Back on the car, Finn survives the bad wounds, but is left unconscious. The Resistance is shocked when R2-D2 wakes up from a long, low-power mode. C-3PO tells the grieving General Leia the good news, and they discover Luke's location. Rey decides to depart to find Luke Skywalker along with Chewbacca and R2-D2. She gives the sleeping Finn a kiss on the head and thanks him for everything. Rey follows the map to a distant planet. There, the ship lands on an island as Rey journeys her way to the top of the island. She discovers Jedi Master Luke Skywalker and presents him with his old lightsaber. The movie rolls around to the credits as the first film of the new trilogy fades to black. Star Wars The Force Awakens is by no means a perfect film. However, it excels far past anything in the prequels. The characters feel real and grounded in their massive galaxy they are set in. Gone are the boring trade negotiations, the love stories revolving around sand, sitting and talking, obvious choreographed lightsaber duels, and cringe-worthy dialogue given by somewhat good actors and really good actors. The Force Awakens takes the audience on a fun and exciting ride into a new, yet familiar, galaxy. I found the character of Rey to be the best, and it's a huge testament for Daisy Ridley. I mean, this was her first major studio film, and probably had the weight of the world on her shoulders. The character Rey is very strong, but also a relatable character. When she meets Finn, she doesn't randomly become a damsel in distress. The character was very much capable of holding her own against the galaxy scum. As for Finn, I thought John Boyega was a relatable character, he was somewhat a coward for good reason. He was a desperate man looking for an escape from the evil of the Force Order. In the end, he overcomes his fear and faces the evil of Kylo Ren in a gruesome lightsaber duel that he absolutely loses in. I feel like Finn has finally found the place he is called to be in the end despite losing. Kylo Ren was another well-rounded character. His story arc is very similar but also very different from both Luke and Anakin Skywalker. He was raised under the light side of the Force and was trained by his uncle Jedi Master Luke Skywalker. He felt a calling from his grandfather Darth Vader in the form of Lord Snoke. This caused Kylo Ren to betray his uncle and he ran off with the Knights of Ren. Haunted by his inner light, Kylo Ren becomes very dangerous and unstable when provoked or just angered. He seeks to eliminate the last light in his head, his father Han Solo. 
Ren was raised on the light side of the forest and was properly seduced by his eagerness to be like his grandfather. When Kylo Ren shouts back at his father that his son is dead, he's pulling a Darth Vader and claiming that the light in his heart is gone for good. Adam Driver was a fantastic choice to play the complex and unstable character. The way Kylo Ren manipulated his father into thinking he was helping him was crazy. Kylo told his father that he has a pain in his head and wanted his father to help him get rid of it. Han kind of assumed that this was the dark side in his head, telling him to continue on to be evil. So he said, yeah, I'll do anything to help you. However, Kylo Ren then kills his father because he was trying to get rid of the light side in his head. So when he killed his father, he killed the light side in his head. Let's move on to a happier character, Poe Dameron. He was funny, exciting, great, and he shares traits of both Luke, Skywalker, and Han Solo. Oscar Isaac brought some comedic moments to the film as well. I love the opening scene with him and Kylo Ren. I thought that the banter between him and Kylo Ren was done very well. Now onto the original cast of the movie. Harrison Ford as Han Solo was great. I loved every minute he was on the screen. Han Solo felt like Han Solo in the movie, and I think that's a true testament to Harrison Ford and his mindset when he was filming this movie. He seemed genuinely happy to return, and it showed in his acting. His final moments were also very memorable. Incidentally saying his last goodbye to Leia, helping Finn destroy the Starkiller base, and of course confronting his son. The tragic moment was a long time coming. Han Solo realistically could not be alive in this universe for a long time. He was a space cowboy and a smuggler and that would have gotten him killed sooner rather than later. As for General Leia Organa, we didn't get much screen time from her. However, in the time she was on screen, I did like the moments when she was on. Um, she, was mo she was more grounded in a stronger character than she was in the original trilogy, obviously being, being more mature. Her only weakness came from her inability to save her son and to bring back her brother Luke Skywalker from hiding. Leia's gone through so much and I am very interested to see how she deals with her son now after finding out that he killed Han Solo. As for smaller characters, found Chewbacca to be very effective and funny in his mo in moments in the movie, along with C-3PO. General Hux was sort of out of place and over the top in this movie, however, his character still has very much potential to be different in the next film, along with Captain Phasma. We did not get to see much of her character at all and she was most likely the the least developed character in the entire movie. Lupita Nyong'o as Maz Cantana was pretty good. I mean, she wasn't exactly Yoda level wise, but she had a very good eye for people and her moment with Rey was the best part. BB-8 was hilarious and very charming in the movie. I mentioned in my spoiler-free review that I was scared of this robot being like a Jar Jar Binks in robotic form. I was very wrong to think that way because Baby 8 was very funny but also very intelligent. And I almost forgot about Luke in this movie. His scenes were very subtle for obvious reasons. I like how the aura of Luke in the entire movie was sort of just a myth of a, a, a mythical and legendary character that we haven't seen yet. In the moments we got him in the movie, it was very effective. Let's talk about some bad things in the movie. Now, like I said, this movie wasn't perfect for a good reason. Some of the plot and, and plot and arcs in the movie were very similar and if not exact in comparison to the original film in 1977. Blow up the super weapon before it blows up a planet. Save the girl in the large super weapon. Accept your greater good and train in the force. Have a hero give a major sacrifice. Other than that, the only problems that I found were convenience and the easiness of some of the film's jeopardies. We also never find out on some of the stuff that we really wanted to know. We didn't find out how Maz Cantana got a hold of Luke Skywalker's lightsaber that was previously cut off on with his, along with his hand in Cloud City by Darth Darth Vader. We never find out who exactly is Supreme Leader Snoke. We don't discover why the First Order started and why, I mean, why the First Order started and how it did start. We don't even find out who Rey's parents are. I know most of this stuff will be saved for future films, but I had to point this stuff out simply because these are things that people generally wanted to know after the movie ended and they didn't get to know. The plot holes and faults didn't keep me from enjoying this movie. I loved it the minute it started and it made me forget I was watching a movie. I was rather taking a trip to the Star Wars world that I know and love and I was following old and new characters that I cared about in their stories. You can tell that I'm very optimistic about the next film since Ryan Johnson is going to be the director. As for this film and J.J. Abrams, I applaud the incredible work that went into this movie. J.J. Abrams knew it was a tremendous pressure to deliver and he delivered. The attention paid to the practical effects was a nice thing to see. The script was also very well done and it gave us a simple yet fun story to follow. And as always, John Williams delivers in his music. Overall, I love The Force Awakens and I found it to be worthy as the best as the third best Star Wars film ahead of the prequels and Return of the Jedi. The Force Awakens was a beautiful and charming movie on its own right, and I found myself enjoying another Star Wars film, which was something a majority of audiences couldn't do 
Ever since 1983, when Return of the Jedi ended, bravo on the film and it deserves a 9.3 rating I gave it in my previous video. Leave a comment below on what you thought of The Force Awakens along with a like on this video. Subscribe for more awesome videos. This was Joel from Real Talk. Thanks for watching.